3D technology has been beneficial to my research because it's allowed me to visualize and to show to others um, things that would be really difficult to explain in words. You would go to the site, look at it in real time. You've taken, you know, 13 hours to fly there and, you know, four hours to drive there and uh, you get up to the site and it's going to be closing in, you know, three hours and you've got your notebook with you and you're taking as many notes as you can. Um, there's only so much that you can think of at the time to check out. When you make a three-dimensional model of the place, you can enjoy the fact beginning that you're you know, taking a lot of first-hand observations, but then when you go back and you actually put the model together, you're confronted with all of the problems that you didn't think about when you went to that site. And so the 3D model allows you to explore new avenues of ideas and new avenues of research that you wouldn't have had otherwise. And it, it, it means that in Tampa I can be intimately attached to either the warship ramps I'm studying or this monument um, for hours at a time that I wouldn't get otherwise. A really important monument for me in this project was um, constructed by the first Roman emperor. It was before he was the Roman emperor. His name was Octavian. He becomes Augustus, the first of a long line of Roman emperors. And um, the moment that, or the event that propelled him into being sort of alone in power was the Battle of Actium. It was the final battle of a summer-long war that he fought between himself and Cleopatra and Mark Antony. And the battle was fought off the western coast of Greece at a place called Cape Actium. When that was all done, he was alone in power and uh, reformed the Roman state into the Roman Empire. He left behind instructions for his engineers to take all of the ships that had been captured in the Battle of Actium, or during the Actium War, and uh, build this giant victory monument that could serve as sort of like a trophy. He had a long retaining wall, 180 feet long, that held up the side of the hill, created a sort of flat terrace. He built some buildings up on top. There was a big altar in the center of it. A number of statues were there. And in the front of that wall that held up the whole thing were a sequence of 35 bronze warship rams. And I believe that they represent the rams from the biggest ships that were in Antony and Cleopatra's fleet. I sat in front of this ancient monument that was a war memorial built by Augustus after the Battle of Actium and I looked at these funny holes in in the front of a retaining wall and it was like I had a eureka moment it was like I know what went in there I know how this works this was back in 1974 something like that my overwhelming urge at the time was yeah well I think I'm right but Maybe I'm wrong, that's the first thing. And the second thing is, I have to be able to explain this to others. And at the time, you know, I was a Star Trek freak, and I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we had a tricorder? And I could just stand in front of this thing and go, you know, and record it that way. Well, now I can. It was when these uh, technologies became available, it was like, this is exactly what I had in mind.